your playhouse of favorites. How do you do? This is Robert Anthony Dean inviting you to your Playhouse of Favorites. Our story today concerns a legendary hero whose love of fair play and bold deeds have been written down in ballads since the time of Chaucer. His fame is equal to that of Bluff King Hal or Bonnie Prince Charlie. In fact, as the poet said, while England shall be England, Robin Hood will be well-loved name. So, in a moment, with Court Benson in the title role, your Playhouse of Favorites brings you Robin Hood, taken from the old ballad set down in 1475 by Winkin de Word. From its place on the shelf of immortal romantic classics, we now take down the ballads of Robin Hood. During the absence of Richard the Lionheart at the Crusades, the misrule of Prince John and his satellites had caused much misery in England. But there arose a champion of justice, an outlaw bold and true who robbed the rich and greedy to help the poor and oppressed. Now come with me to Sherwood Forest and learn of Robin Hood and his men and of Lady Marion and the proud Sheriff of Nottingham. Some more of this good brown ale, Friar Tuck? Some good red deer do me more good, little Jen. We've fasted three long hours. Ah, by St. Crispin, a body rotund as yours has small need to die in Jolly Tuck. <laughs> Besides, it is our master Robin's wish that we await his return. I know, I know. Bringing some fat abbot to feast with us. I and to pay a goodly reckoning. <laughs> it is Robin Hood's horn. He thinks, Fat Friar, you will soon be feasting to your belly's content. <laughs> but look, you little John, there's no Fat Abbot who accompanies Robin. Aye, as sad and sorrowful a night as ever I looked upon. Who can he be? Will Scathelock, Alan Adale, Little Much, gather around. The master brings a special guest. Yes, yes, here he comes over Hold on, my merry men. Ah, this worthy knight is Sir Richard of the Lee. Make him welcome to our good chair and feasting. Welcome indeed, sir. You are timely come, sir knight. Aye, welcome to Robin Hood's band. Thank you, sirs. God rest ye all. And now, Sir Richard, sit you here beside me, and eat your fill of venison and pheasant. Thank and you. plenty of bread and ale. Aye, Friar Tuck, plenty of everything at Robin Hood's table for those who are deserving. <laughs> "'Tis many a week since I've had such meat and drink, good Robin. (laughs) But I cannot pay, for I have but ten shillings to call my own. Ah, you can repay us, gentle knight, by telling us what brought you to these sorry straits. To save my son's life, he entered a tournament and by mischance slew the squire of Guy of Gisborne. Ah, he's a dangerous enemy. He's one of Prince John's jackals. I pledged my lands and castle to raise the ransom money. When must you repay the debt? This very day at setting sun. Mm -hmm. Then there's no time to lose. How great is the sum you owe? With usury, it has grown to 500 pounds. Usury? Aye, the Sheriff of Nottingham. The Sheriff of Nottingham. Enough. I'd expect it as much. That scheming knave is a blight to our fair England. Little John. Aye. Go to our treasury and fetch some gold. Sir Richard's debt will be paid this hour. My heart is full, good Robin. How can I speak my gratitude? Friar Tuck. Aye. Will Scathelock. Aye, Robin. Clothe our guest in proper raiment and speed him on his way. 
I go to find the thieving sheriff. And little will he like the trick I mean to play on him. <laughs> He's yeah. deaf, but he's getting all the trade. He sells more meat for a penny than I was doing for three. And gives it free to poor widows. Now come all ye lasses, a butcher am I, I flesh to sell, who'll buy, who'll buy. Out of my path, you lout. Make way for his worship, the Sheriff of Nottingham. I have given one curse his black heart. And the Lady Marion is with him. Here, Sheriff, is the fellow who sells his meat so cheap the other butchers complain. No doubt he's a thief or a fool. Butcher, I would speak with you. But, Sheriff, he means no harm. I like the twinkle in his eyes. Ah, fair lady, such beauty speaks in my behalf. Silence, fellow. How dare you address the Lady Marion Fitzwalter? So you are the Lady Marion Fitzwalter? Yes, Butcher, so I am called. What can that possibly mean to you, sir? Only what she must mean to every man that sees her. The freshness of morning dew, the sweetness of a summer rose. Enough. Lady Marion, return to the castle at once with Sir Guy. I would speak with this amazing butcher alone. Come, Lady Marion. This is no proper place for you. Now, butcher, I'll make it worth your while if you tell me how you come by all this meat. Your noble worship, I can show you great herds of horned beasts. That you will sell to me? To me alone? Aye. All you care to buy, illustrious sheriff. No one else need know. Where are these herds? Far from here? My broad acres are but a few leagues away, Excellency. Then I will have my palfrey saddled and ride with you straightway. Remember, bring your money bags to seal the bargain. Eh? What's that? I say, bring plenty of gold. You'll have need of it. <laughs> <laughs> See here, butcher. I like not this forest road. It is dangerously close to that villain Robin Hood's lair. Why should you fear, good master sheriff? Uh, Robin Hood has never yet harmed a just man. And surely your justice itself? Uh, of course, of course. But I wish I were far from here. By the saints, where are these beasts of yours? In the glade ahead and through these trees. Uh, there! Look yonder, Sheriff. There are my horned beasts. What? Those are the king's deer. Aye. Are they not fat and fair and worth all your gold? And behold my broad acres. And a merry band to welcome you. Ah, oh, hundred devils. I've been tricked. They are Robin Hood's men. Aye, sweet Sheriff. And Robin himself to serve you. Hola, little John. Oh. Merry men all. Oh. Gather round to greet our worshipful guest, the Sheriff. Have not <laughs> Look, you, Sir Guy, coming through the castle gate. A comic figure clad in pilgrim's rags. Good sooth, I vow, tis the proud sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> Aye, it is indeed. A sorrier sight as ever I saw. Help me. Help me to a bench before I swoon. Your worship, what has befallen? I fell among the outlaws, a pox on them all. And that butcher fellow was none other than Robin Hood. The butcher? Robin Hood? They shrew his heart, and they robbed you of your shoes and velvet robes. Aye, and of my jeweled chain and rings. They jested while I cursed their villainy and taunted me with boasts of their prowess with a longbow. And then let you go? After I had paid them 500 pieces of gold? <laughs> By your leave, Sheriff, I needs must laugh. The majesty of law and order brought to such confusion. <laughs> Impudent change! You'll forget yourself, Lady Marion. You'll speak with more seemly tongue when you're my bride. Leave us! I never wed you, Guy of Gisborne. Never. Uh, by the breath of my body, Sir Guy, I crave to see this Robin Hood hang from the highest tree. Let me ride in force to Sherwood Forest and seize that noisome wealth. Ah, fool's errand to try to take him there. We must lure him to Nottingham. But how? How? Wait, Sheriff. Did you not say that Robin Hood boasted of his prowess with the longbow? Aye. Well, what better way to draw him from his den than a test of skill? 
A must have thought, Sir Guy. Robin Hood could never resist so great a challenge. And with a golden arrow as the prize, so rich a bait will surely tempt him. Then proclaim this news, Sir Guy, to all the archers in the land. One week hence, the greatest shooting match the town of Nottingham has ever seen. <laughs> St. Crispin, we have seen noble shooting this day. There are but three archers left facing the butt. Nay, two only, for old Clem of the Clough hath ceded the prize to the others. No man can best yon tattered fellow in red. I'll lay you two score silver pennies on Gilbert of the White Hand. Uh, Gilbert, ho, oh, Gilbert of the White Hand. Wait, a new target has been set. They take their places at the mark. Shh. Hockey, hockey, hockey. The judges will now decide between these final twain. Who shall win the arrow of fair gold? From seven score yards and ten, ye shall shoot, and but one arrow. One arrow. One arrow. One arrow. One arrow. One arrow. Gilbert of the white hand, pitch your arrow to the bow. It is so done. Then shoot ye for the golden shaft. A perfect shot. It's lodged a finger's breadth from the center. Well done, Gilbert. Now let the ragged stranger try to better that shot. Hockey, hockey. Stranger, whatever your name be, fit your arrow to the bow. Stand ready. I am ready. Then shoot. Now speed thee well, my gray goose shot. Sheriff, he has split Gilbert's arrow in twain. Such a dangerous one. The guy, never have I seen such skill. Bring the fellow to me. Make way! Make way! Make way for the ragged one. By all the saints in paradise, that was a lovely shaft in very truth. Here, come here, fellow. The prize is yours. Take the golden arrow from the hand of my ward, the Lady Marion Fitzwalter. I have carried the image of Lady Marion in my heart since first I saw her. Oh, it's you. How dared you come? Have no fear, fair lady. Present the prize. I present this golden arrow as a prize fairly won. You did bravely, sir. Not even the cowardly knave Robin Hood could have done so well. Now, what is your name, fellow? Some call me Reynold Greenleaf. Then, Reynold, take service with me. I can use such a man. Nay, that I will not. No man in all England save the king shall be my master. No more earn seize thee for the Charlie's rogue. Get your hands. I am a lord, and that right speedily. Till we meet again, Lady Marion. Fare thee well, stranger. Fare thee well. The guy, there was something about that saucy knave that belied his tattered raiment. It is a great pity it was not Robin Hood himself. How did our plan fail? For by me troth, I was sure that rogue would show his face at the games today. I thought him bold and not such a craven coward. Bloodless wench hanged that arrow. There's a scroll threaded on the shaft. Read it. Read it, Sir Guy. Rejoice to learn, O oh generous sheriff, that I shall treasure your prize arrow until the day I plant it in your black heart. What's this? What's this? Who sent this message? It's signed... Give me that scroll. Yes, tis as I thought. Robin Hood. Oh, Robin Hood. <laughs> And so the curtain falls on the first act of the story of Robin Hood, as the old ballads tell it. Back to the story of Robin Hood, as told in the old ballads, presented by your playhouse of favorites and starring Court Benson.
Robin Hood, the merry outlaw of Sherwood Forest, through his love of fair play, has gained a friend in Sir Richard of the Lee and made an enemy of the crafty Sheriff of Nottingham. The Sheriff proclaimed an archery contest, but failed in his plan to capture the wily Robin, who, by dyeing his beard and disguising himself in rags, won the match and escaped to Sherwood Forest. The second half of our story takes us back to the greenwood tree. Some months have passed, but our brave outlaw is still dreaming of the lovely face of the Lady Marion. Little John and Friar Tuck are watching him. Little John speaks. <laughs> By thy ball paid, Friar Tuck. Our jolly Robin has greatly changed these months past. <laughs> Aye, since that archery match, he is wont to gaze into space and sigh like a lovesick swain. <laughs> ah, I fear me it has robbed him of his daring. For it is over long since he has sought adventure. Perhaps yonder horseman crossing the glen mm-hmm. might serve to cure his wool gathering. Look, you little John. What? A squire rides with him. Hola, good Robin. Bestir thyself. We have a guest, and I mistake not. Hola, Robin Hood. Ah, it is Richard of the Lee. Welcome, Sir Richard. Good morning, friend Robin. Ah, little John and holy father. Greetings. Sir Richard. Greetings to all of you. Greetings. How now, sir? Methinks you're much gayer than when last in Sherwood. What brings you? Well, friend Robin, this is a happy day for me, for I am come to repay the great debt I owe you. <laughs> Put by your gold, brave knight. For have you not heard that the sheriff himself paid your debt to us some time ago? <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, if you will not accept my gold, my squire yonder bears a special gift. One you'll not refuse. <laughs> your squire? Well, bid him hither. Uh, nay, Robin, for the lad is young and uh, overshy. Shy? Why, then I'll go to him and teach him to be bold. So, oh, young stripling, you have a word for the ear of Robin Hood. Yes, and it please you. Merciful heaven. Tis the Lady Marian. Oh, my sweet, what dost thou hear? I prevailed upon Sir Richard to bring me as his squire, for I so needed to seek your aid. I would serve you to the death if need be, my lady. Then save me from Guy of Gisborne. The sheriff swears to make me marry him. But, but you're the king's ward. He dare not do this. He dares anything. He has usurped the power of guardian and sent to London for the Bishop of Hereford. Have you no kinfolk, no protector? When I was a child, our dear king betrothed me to the young Earl of Huntington. Robert of Huntington? Do you know where he is now? Alas, I know not. Because he gave his revenues to the poor rather than to enrich Prince John's coffers, he was banished. Did you love this young Earl? We were but children. Have you thought what he might be like today? Somehow, he might have your look. Yes, he might be such a man as you. And you could love such a man? Yes, Robin. I think I might. Very easily. Oh, my love. Then bide here with me and you need never fear this guy of Gisborne. Nay, Robin. I must in honor await the king's return. Then ride back to Nottingham with Sir Richard. Swear by this kiss. I swear, dear Robin. Send me instant word of the bishop's arrival, and I shall be at your side. For now, my lovely Marion, you belong to me, and I'm the proudest man in all this glorious world. Hey, but oh, landlord! More tankards of this good English ale. <laughs> Sounds what a morning this was. What a merry chase we've had. Aye, sir, but we've not yet run our fox to earth. We will, we will. The day is yet young. Is your ale, gentlemen? Ah, uh, stay, good landlord. Perchance you may help us. The snow the outlaw, Robin Hood. Aye, sir. We seek this fellow. But for three hours we've ridden Sherwood Forest end to end. And by St. Withal all we found was silence and a few deer. <laughs> Simple gentry such as you could never find Robin Hood. Simple gentry? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, fellow? Oh, no disrespect, gentlemen. But he will find you in the twink of an eye. And you take my advice. <laughs> what advice, oh wise landlord? Ride to yonder abbey, and there clad yourself as a lord abbot and your company as monks. And that being done, you say he will find us? Aye, sirs. For bold Robin can smell a Percy Abbot a league away. Mm. To the Abbey, then. We'll try his plan. Here's your reckoning, landlord. 
And thank you. These monks' robes be hot and cumbersome. Yes, and this abbot's hood is stifling, but it serves to cover my countenance. Wait, sir. There are men in Lincoln Green in yon covert. Mm. The landlord's right. The fox hath nosed us out. Hold, oh, Sir Abbot. For these hands itch to feel the miser's gold in that fat purse. What ho, an abbot! With money bags, I have Aye, set your arrows, lads, lest they prove troublesome. Aye. Dismount, I say. Hey, what is this place, and who art thou, Sirrah? Robin Hood, host at the sign of the Greenwood Tree. So at last I found the traitor Robin Hood, eh? Uh, <laughs> I cast that lie in your teeth, proud abbot. For each of us here would lay down his life for our dear king. We are honest yeomen who serve his majesty well. Honest? When you would rob a nabbit of his tithe? Aye, to help the victims of smug priors and the fawning lickspits of Prince John. Well spoken. It would seem there's more justice today in Sherwood than at Prince John's court. Now, by St. Charity, give over that purse, or must I take it? And what if I refuse so much as a cracked farthing? Then that cowl of yours will taste that drubbing from my stout quarterstaff. It ill befits my garb to smite a yeoman. But if yon tall fellow will but hand me that cudgel he bears... <laughs> yeah, take little John Staff, bold abbot, and woe betide ye. All our men, a bow! for the abbot! <laughs> take up your cudgel. Now look to yourself. How <laughs> about you, Robbie? Oh. Oh. On my oath, right. you are a stalwart prior. Hey, so. <laughs> Here's a stroke to fellow Knox. <laughs> Come, man, smite more boldly. Are you faint-hearted? <laughs> Out upon it, Abbot. Wilt cry a mercy? <laughs> ah, never. Now guard thy pate. Take that Ooh, and that. Hey, How hey, like hey, you hey, this hey, love, hey, Pat? Hey. I, I yield me. Robin, Robin, is down. Down. Robin is sticking to the earth. Devil take this, Abbot. You'll not go free for that. Come on, lad. Hey. Nay, nay, little John, forbear. For he's a stout fellow. Hey. Here, we'll take my hand, Abbot, and be my friend. Robin Hood! Ah. Oh, Robin Hood! The messenger! I am hard written. What news, man? <laughs> speak, man, speak! I ride. I ride for Lady Marianne in Nottingham. The Bishop of Hereford has come from London Town. The wedding takes place at sundown. My thanks, lad. Now hear ye, my true and loyal men. By all your hopes of heaven... Make haste with me to Nottingham to rescue the Lady Marion. But the sheriff will have men-at-arms at all the gates. Their broadswords are no match for our clothyard shafts. Besides, there are other ways to enter the town. Other ways in truth, friend Robin. They will not bar the gates to men in holy orders. My monks and I will ride into the town with you. You will join us, Abbot. That I will. For do we not both love justice and a good fight? <laughs> Spare me this hateful marriage, Sheriff. Do not profane our holy chapel. And lose the gold that Guy of Gisborne has paid me for your hand? <laughs> you think me mad? Have you no pity in your heart? Give me a little while longer. Sniveling girl, be quiet. Enough of this delay, Sheriff. The Lord Bishop awaits us. Must I carry my bride to the altar? Do not touch me, Guy of Gisborne. I hate you. Peace. Peace, my child. A bride with tears on her bunny. Lord, Abbot, this is none of your affair. How passed you by my men-at-arms? Surely a man in holy orders may visit a chapel. Out of my way, Abbot. Let this wedding proceed. Come, Lady Marion. Give me your hand. Nay, Guy of Gisborne. I think you will not dare to enter yon chapel. Who says me nay? Robin Hood. Aye. Look yonder, Sheriff, in every tree and on the walls. Men in Lincoln Green with long bows. Gentlemen of the guard! A thousand devils! Where are the men-at-arms? Oh, now, friend Sheriff, we meet again. Your men-at-arms will not serve you. They fear the arrows of my merry men. Oh, Marion, my lady, you are safe. Safe now with you, my dear one. A pretty picture. The king's outlaw and the king's ward. <laughs> what would his wandering majesty say to that? His majesty would say, we are pleased indeed. <gasps> king, king Richard, king. sire. Your majesty... Pardon for my men, sire. I know well your loyalty, Robin. The outlaws shall have full pardon. And now, fair Lady Marion, 
We shall soon wed you to your betrothed, the Earl of Huntington. Sire, from my heart, on my knee, I beg your royal leave to marry the man I love, Robin Hood. So? Well, come then. It is unchristian to keep the Lord Bishop waiting. We'll wed you to both of them. Your Majesty, I know not what you mean. <laughs> Tell her, Robin. Gladly, sire. My sweet lady, I, thy lover, am that Robert of Huntington, whom men have called Robin Hood. <laughs> And so the curtain falls on the legend of Robin Hood, as brought to you by your playhouse of favorites and starring Court Benson. This is Robert Anthony Dean reminding you that front row seats are reserved for you the very next time our curtain rises on another romantic classic presented for your favorite listening pleasure by your Playhouse of Favorites.